Welcome. Uh, so this is our fourth episode for the Youth Empowering Youth Show. If you guys are tuning in, we have two awesome guests. We're really excited to have them out here. And uh, I have my co-host today, uh, the amazing Vanessa Wadeski, uh, <laughs> founder and leader extraordinaire for the uh, for the low entropy uh, community. And we are the Youth Empowering Youth Program. And so, you know, if this is the first episode that you're tuning in, just want to let you know a little bit about the program. So the whole point of the program was we were actually going to schools and we wanted to teach uh, youth life skills that they can learn and be empowered over a nine week period where they can go back and teach it to their peers, right? Uh, because there's something called the power of proximity. When, when people are closest to us, if we look at our friends in our life, um, the people who we surround ourselves, we become. And so we wanted to empower the youth to eventually be youth facilitators, eventually have this as a, a paid program where youth get paid to be a leader in society where they can use their tools and their ideas to empower youth. And so that's kind of the whole idea of the program. So before we get started, I just wanted to first uh, pass on to Vanessa to talk a little bit about low entropy, about your experience and why do you back uh, the, why did you want to create a youth program? I know you have two youth yourself, and uh, you're also working on a kid program too, which is super exciting. So tell us a little more about that. Sure. Thanks, Matthew. Yeah, yeah, we are. We're working on a children's program that will be launched at the end of June. So coming up here very soon. Um, for me, the reason why a youth program was so important is because being in the business of, of having a charity is that we want to we want to improve the world, right? We want to make the world a better place. That's ultimately why people get start a charity. And I want to change the world from the inside out rather than offering a band-aid solution and just giving people um, something to fulfill their needs that's temporary. I wanted to do something that was more permanent where we could address the root issue of all the dysfunction that we see in the world today. And so the root issue, it boils down to us, people, the choices that we make. It's our human behavior that causes the dysfunction that we see in the world today. So rather than trying to change things externally, we're working internally at the core level. And what better place than to start with our youth? So that's why we started this Youth Empowering Youth Program. And really, Matthew and, and Lev, his partner, have taken this and just ran with it and are doing an amazing job. Um, I'm just kind of in the background. I'm, I'm a guest here too, along with Pam and Yasmin. So I'm, I'm excited to learn more about what's going on with you and to hear Matthew share more. So thank you. Yes, for sure. So thanks, Vanessa. So yes, we have our two awesome guests, uh, Pam and our daughter, Yasmin. Uh, so before we kind of go to the lesson about uh, fail forward to success, um, we're actually really, it's really cool that uh, Pam, you're able to come here because you actually are a life coach and, and have been working with youth in your in your business. Uh, so maybe you can talk a little more about that. Like, uh, what do you see as, as the vision kind of um, for, for youth and how do you think they're being impacted right now by COVID-19? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, so I do. I work with women and teens and my goal is to help young women and young teens with acceptance, so not just body acceptance, but overall like confidence and um, and just being confident with speaking their truths um, and being themselves, because that's really what's most important is not always trying to act or be like their friends and peers, but just show up as they are. So that's that's really my passion is, is helping young women, um, young girls have that confidence to come forward and, and show up authentically. Um, as far as COVID, I think like, you could probably agree, just not like missing out on their friends, right? It's that social, they're missing, they're missing that social piece. Because as, as much as like, it seems nice to be home, it's like different circumstances, right? Yeah. Yeah, everyone's adjusting, it's a whole different thing. So Yasmin, how, how are you, sorry, how are you uh, adjusting to this whole, you know, virtual world, and you still have to do all the schools and all the uh, classes. Yeah, um, it was a little hard to begin with because obviously I wasn't used to it and the teachers weren't used to it either. So we were all like, just like really like adjusting to it. 
And it was weird not seeing my teachers face to face or like seeing my friends face to face at school, like asking questions. You kind of just had to like figure them out by yourself or like email your teacher. You couldn't really like get that like visual help. Um, but it's been good so far. It's a little harder than actually being at school for me. I know it's different for lots of other people. Like some people find it easier because they have way more time, but um, yeah, it's just, I'm adjusting well to it and, and it's become my new normal. Got it. That's awesome. Okay. So in your grade nine right now, right? Yeah. Yes, your grade nine. So what's one of your kind of goals, just to kind of put you on the spot, <laughs> um, but what's one of the goals that you kind of have that you're shooting for um, whether it's a short-term goal or a long-term goal that you have for yourself that you're trying to learn these life skills for? Um, well, I really enjoy playing sports and I play on the volleyball team. So one of my like short-term goals is to make the school team next year and club team. Um, but also I want to work up to the spot as team captain because that's always like what I've wanted to be on the team. And um, honestly, just like show up as like, like my mom said, like really being like authentic and like being myself and just, yeah, just honestly like being myself and just showing them like that I can know that spot and be like confident in myself and in others to help them bring themselves up on the team. That's awesome. So sports is actually a great uh, transition for this lesson. So, you know, in sports, you don't win all the time. Have you ever lost before or have you always been undefeated? <laughs> no, we've definitely lost before. No, yeah. has. Okay. So one of the, the lessons that we have is fail forward to success. So I'm curious, uh, Yasmin, when failure happens, when you, things don't go your way, when you made an attempt and it didn't work, how do you deal with it? Um, that's a hard one. I kind of, so I'm going to go back to sports. When we lost a game, we kind of just all came together and kind of just said, it's okay. Like we know what mistakes we made and how we can learn from them. And we kind of went over the game and like we watched the playbacks of how we played and we recognized what we did. And we recognized that it was very little mistakes and that it wasn't like super harsh but we knew how to change it for next game. So we kind of like went back and just like analyzed what we did and then knew what we had to do to not make that mistake again. That's awesome. So you've, you've, you've heard of uh, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? When you look, sometimes you can only uh, connect the dots looking backwards, right? So you said the great examples. Let's say if you're doing sports, if you're in the game, you're so connected to it that you really don't know if how to reflect on what you did. But when you can look back at a videotape, something that's separate out of you, you can see, okay, though, this is what I can do. And you at, and your coach can help, you know, find out the, the, the great lessons. And uh, that, that's, that's, if you, that same method, you can pull in all areas of your life. It's not just sports, it's, it's anything. And so I want you to think of a, a specific event outside of sports, because I know sports will be pretty easy for you. Think about the last type of event you don't have to share, but a, a, something that you were really attached to that didn't go your way. So have that idea in your head. Let me know when you have that. Would you like me to share? Uh, you don't have to right now. You, you can just have it in your head, okay? okay. Now, I want you to, uh, we, we, we teach a form called, uh, it's, it's a four part form. So the first part is what we call label the event. So when something happens, right, there's, we, it's not really good or bad. It's, it's the meaning that we create of it, right? So if we can make an event, if it was like, a, for example, I remember one time I did really, really bad on a test. It was a, a, a physics test. And I just, I actually studied the wrong chapter. <laughs> so I basically completely bombed the test and that, uh, and I started beating myself up. So rather than looking at as an event where, okay, well, that was, you know, I'm a good student. I, I, I study normally. I just made a mistake. I took 
I took like a whole week and that just led to the next, you know, worst exam and, and worst mark. And it just kind of snowballed, right? So one thing I can, that we can do is when something bad happens or when we're attached to it, we can label it as an event. Let's we'll say, okay, make it non-personal. Kind of like you, you look at yourself outside uh, on, uh, in sports as, a, as, a, as a reflecting on, on your video, right? Of, you, of a replay, right? So that's step number one. Number two, if this is outside of you, what would you give as if it was an advice to your friend, right? So sometimes we're really good at giving advice, but sometimes we're not really good at taking our own advice, right? <laughs> so that's the second thing, which is, okay, we make it outside of us. And then we say, okay, if this was a friend, how would I give them advice? How would they deal with it? Because when it's so close to us, it becomes a blind spot. And number three is what we call is the little voice, right? And I'll show you a little acronym so you can always remember this. Uh, if you ever want to use it, the little voice. So we all have a little voice in our mind, right? So do you have a little voice in your head too? Or is it just me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so as soon as, for those of you guys are watching, some people say, well, what little voice? That's the little voice. And now we have that little voice that kind of beats us up all, all, all the time. It makes us, uh, when we're late and we're like, I told you so, or you're always like this. Now it's the kind of narrative we have in our head Kind of like in a movie so you ever seen movies where like there's like that narrative in the in the background that you know that talk about the story so we have that in our mind and instead of uh trying to if we just listen to it and not follow it we can just be aware so um when the little voice says you know oh you're oh you do this all the time or you're not good enough so what are some ideas that come to you that your little voice says to you can you think of anything? Uh, well, mostly when like I make a mistake, um, the first thing that like pops in my head is like, "Why did you do that? You knew better." Like, yeah. like sometimes like you're not smart. Like, why did you do that? Like, just all these things that like kind of go like negatively like push me down when I make a mistake, mm -hmm. and then I always I never forget it because every time that I make a mistake, it's always like, or well, like as an example, like a test, I do really bad on a test and it's just like, all these thoughts pop in my head. Oh, that person's smarter than you. You need to do better. You should have studied harder or like all these negative thoughts go through my mind. And it's just, it's, it's not good. It's like, like what my mom said, an inner critic. Mm -hmm. That's just like, inside, like mm -hmm. yeah, no, exactly. Inner critic. So Pam, like, uh, what, what kind of things that uh, has been your experience with the little, little voice in your head and also with the clients that you're dealing with? Mm. Yeah, I get this. I get this a lot. I mean, even myself and we as adults, we struggle with this as well, right? And it's that setting that setting aside that need for perfection. So I know for me, I grew up perfectionist, um, even how I parented. I mean, we have three daughters and when Yasmin was younger, we were always like, we got to do it perfect. And we got to do your, your schoolwork perfect and clean the house perfect. And now it's, if she doesn't do well on a test, it's like, that's okay. And really focusing on, we're putting our best foot forward and not um, striving for perfection because I find that when we strive for perfection, that's where that inner voice in our head is just like, you could do better. As Yasmin said, someone else is always going to do something better. Um, or yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just about doing our best and being kind to ourselves and showing that compassion to ourselves, because there's always going to be times where we, we excel and times that we struggle, but we have to try anyways. We have to, we have to go after things, even if they do appear to be challenging, because life would be so boring if we just showed up, you know, without trying. So yeah, as far as, as far as inner critic though, I mean, yeah, I think we just need to be mindful of that voice and just let that voice know, like, I don't need you anymore. That voice was there to protect us, but we don't need to, we don't need to tap into that and allow that, you know, someone else is better than you, or I could have done better. Um, or, yeah, there's, there's so many examples, but just saying, I don't, I don't need you anymore. That's, a, that's often the advice that I'll give to a client is we actually name that inner critic. We give her a voice or him a oh. voice. 
and, or a name, sorry, and we actually name it. So it's like, if it's Karen, it's like, Karen, I don't need you anymore. Or specifically naming it, you know, just to make it kind of funny, but also just like, it's always going to be there. So just setting it aside. No, it's true. And it, it, for me, I always tell myself, like, no one can beat me up more than me. <laughs> like, I know how to beat myself up. And when I'm down, I could do it. But also, it's also about anchoring those little wins. It's like, good job, Matthew, you know, just li little pats on the back, because if we don't cheer ourselves on, who else will, right? And so that's really about the little voice It's just, so there's two types, there's three types of thinking, there's positive thinking, and there's negative thinking. But there's something that's really powerful in the middle called neutral thinking. And just accepting when the voice talks to you is actually really powerful. So, you know, uh, so one of the things I struggled with whenever I failed something, I would call myself as a failure instead of saying, no, I just failed that the event was a failure. I failed because I wasn't prepared, but I'm not a failure. So I, um, so it just kind of, um, when you can separate it from yourself, it becomes very empowering and just by accepting it. So neutral thinking is a really good way when the little voice comes in to say, okay, I got it. You know, just, just accept it. Just, we don't have to listen to that opinion. So the last one is ask how to reframe. So if I'm telling myself, oh, I'm a failure, I, you know, I failed this test, okay, well, if I keep thinking this way, is it gonna help me get better than the next test? No, okay. So go, that kind of brings you to neutral thinking. And then how can I ask myself a question to make it more empowering? So, uh, so uh, Yasmin, if you look at yourself when you now um, accepted the event or that what didn't go your way, how could you reframe it to make it serve you? Um, I just like, if I accepted my like inner voice and in me, as you said, like, okay, I didn't do well, but I am not a failure. Like I am not. I failed the test, but I'm not, I feel like that could help me like so much because you notice what you've done and then that will help you prepare for like what is to come. So. Yeah, exactly. So, so you, you have that idea now, right? So this becomes a little acronym. It's, it's L A L A or la 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 la. So one thing that we, we, we tell people is like when, when your little voice or even if an outside event that uh that, that you know critic you just go la 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 <laughs> kind of thing and it's something as, as silly as it is but it helps you remember it so the first a is label the event the next one is what advice would you give that person if it was if it was if it was your friend uh, the next L is that little voice just listen to it and just say okay i hear you but i don't have to you know uh follow you and the last one is a ask for a reframe. How can I ask and reframe this so it can actually serve me? So Vanessa, uh, anything you want to add? Because I know you have to go to your next meeting. But uh, how have you been dealing with your kind of little voice? And you know, you, you help a lot of people with your group with conscious connections. And what have you found that works for you guys? Um, yeah, what works for me personally, because I still have the little voice, um, the inner critic, um, and what I've been doing lately, because it changes every year, I'll try something new until eventually I, I'm hopeful that eventually that little voice will dissolve completely. I feel like it has been um, dissipating more and more over the years as I work towards um, consciousness evolution or whatever you want to call it, bettering myself. And so where it's at right now is I still have it daily. It'll come up. And rather than trying to fight against it, I just, I just notice it and I witness it and I don't really do anything with it. I just observe it because I feel like if I kind of fight against it, it's only holding it more in place. It's making it more real. But if I just observe it, I see it as this fleeting thought that's not real. It has no power over me. And then I can just let it go. So. Yeah, that's great. That's powerful. And yeah. so, uh, uh, Yasmin, um, if you were to t give someone advice, let's say you had you had a friend or someone came to you and says, "You know what? I'm really struggling right now. I, I'm I'm kind of stuck. I don't really 
uh, you know, it doesn't seem like everything that I do is working and why should I even try anymore? So what would be just, you know, a quick advice or encouragement that you would give that person? Um, I just say like, first, like take a deep breath and just calm down because usually when you're thinking those things, you're stressed or you're not calm. Like you, when you're stressed, so many things just pop up in your mind and you just actually need to like calm down to like actually think those things through. And then I would um, just say like, I'm here for them and like help them and they can always come to me and just kind of like look back and be like, it's okay. Like you might be struggling but you know that you can do this and you just need to like take it easy and not do so much at a time to make yourself stressed out and come back to this where you can't think, right? That is so yeah. awesome. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You're actually giving them the encouragement and you're empowering them. So you're actually teaching them how to master themselves and let them know like, hey, like it's it's like you can't go to a garden and say hey there's no weeds there's no weeds right there are weeds but you say you know we, we can do something about them so that's super powerful and we're looking forward to having you part having you at our nine week program because i know you're really gonna thrive you are i can already see you already have like the leadership skills the mindset and uh to give you that platform where you can actually be a leader between leaders uh it's gonna be really really awesome um so um, Pam, uh, what would you say if uh, same, same sort of advice for someone uh, who would be either, let, let, let's say it was a, uh, um, you said one of your clients, you said you work with uh, adults, uh, teenagers and, and girls or women? Yeah, teens, teens, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let, let's say for example, someone says, you know what, I have this goal that I really want, uh, but I, I really just don't know how to, what to do it feels like there's there's less opportunities uh, it feels like i'm not getting the help or the support and just not in the best kind of environment yeah you know everything seems really disconnected so what would be kind of a piece of advice that you would give um mm. that person who just the kind of like the first step that can lead to more uh more opportunities mm. that's a great question thank you i I think really like narrowing it down because like Yasmin said, so often we have so many things on our mind or like you were saying, when someone comes to you stressed out, they need to almost like calm down. I think the same with goal setting. So when we're working towards something, instead of saying, you know, I want to open a business and I need to open a social media page and a website and this and that, it's like narrowing our goal down to smaller so smaller steps so that we can be, do baby steps so that we're not putting so much pressure on ourselves. Um, so then, like you said earlier, we can see it from a smaller perspective instead of feeling that overwhelm that there's so much to do. Is that, is that clear? Yeah, no, that makes yeah. sense. And what I, would be the yeah. first step that could help them? Um, like, how would you know what would be the first step to do? Let's say if someone's goal is like they're in, they're in school and they want to go in, you know, university, but right now they don't have the grades. Right now they, they, they're not really um, getting there, and they just made a decision. You want, I want to change. So, what would be like the first step to start building towards that change and changing their identity? I think working on our belief system is really important, right? So, again, getting clear on what it is that they want. So, if they're wanting to get into university, it's for me, our belief system is so important. It's so similar to what you were saying with the inner critic. If we have these negative beliefs about ourselves or we're not clear on our goals, we're not going to move in the direction that we want. So if we want to go to university, say, um, we need to first believe that we're worthy of that, right? If we are acting as if we're worthy of it and we believe, truly believe that we're worthy of that goal, then we're going to get more clear on that. So for me, working with teens, it's really narrowing down their belief system and seeing where they're at. And if they're not feeling for worthy, for example, is what can we do to build trust in our bodies, whether that's just micro decisions, just little decisions and things that we can do to build trust within ourselves to start increasing that belief, that 
positive belief system. Because I say to Yasmin, if we can have that positive belief in ourselves and she can feel as though she's worth it, um, and she believes that, she's going to succeed and she's going to reach her goals. Um, we're working on a wellness center here right now in our property. We live in Abbotsford in the Fraser Valley and we'll be working with teens as well and young girls and she's hopefully going to be one of our youth leaders. So that's something she's working on now so that she can work with the younger girls. Perfect. Which we're not doing yet, but yeah, very excited for that. Also to add to your question, uh, I find if you start, if your goal is go to university, but you're not doing so great in school right now, start with little goals because like how, just think about how you feel when you achieve a goal, like even small or big or like make your bed, you feel great. And I feel like it really sets the tone for your day or your week or your month even because you know, I made a goal and I achieved it. So if you keep making little goals and maybe slowly and slowly making them bigger and bigger or making your goals very achievable, like say, I want to get like a B in physics and then you achieve that goal, you'll feel great. And then be like, Hey, I want an A or like keep moving up. You'll mm -hmm. feel great. And you'll feel more motivated to go forth with those goals because you feel that you can achieve them. Mm -hmm. it's beautiful. Wow. That was amazing advice. Totally. It's all about building that momentum and you get a win and win, win. And it could be literally as simple as just keeping your promises, like just folding your bed and just, you know, just building the habit and just letting it grow. So that is awesome. So I do appreciate everybody that came in a, a, to be a part of the show. Um, so for those of you who are just tuning in, just want to quickly wrap up. So we are launching uh, May 26th is our Youth Empowering Youth uh, nine-week program. It's all about teaching about uh, empowerment, responsibility, and about leadership, where we'll have the youth between ages uh, 13 to 18 coming together sharing their life skills and really at the end we have the opportunity where they can graduate come back and teach the next group both they'll be the teen program and also the kid program so it was awesome it was a pleasure to kind of connect with you guys and you know nowadays with this um with this uh now virtual reality we're connecting with more people than ever before we were just in a school but now we're going to be uh, i think one person's plugging from nigeria so it's a pretty interesting wow how close, how close uh, this world is going to be. And uh, I'll be posting the link uh, for the registration um, underneath for all those that want to uh, sign up for our free youth program. And uh, yeah, so thanks everyone for tuning in and I hope you guys have a great weekend. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank Matthew. You. Thank you. Really great seeing you guys. Take care.